I do believe we're live. Yay. <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure my disturb is, is on so that I don't get interrupted. Um, and it looks like it is. I think so. I think. We'll see. Yep. Do not disturb is on. So we're good to go. Should we just jump into this thing, Gordon? I'll start the intro and get it going. <clears throat> Let's get going. Okay. to this rather special edition of Live with Bottleneck. Uh, typically what we do on Wednesdays is interview amazing business leaders and agency owners, and, and they share ways that they can help stop the bottleneck in your business and your life. And, and uh, Gordon and I were talking and we decided, hey, why don't we, why don't we talk a little bit about bottleneck and, and see um, if we can share some of our insights to help you stop the bottleneck in your business by figuring out how to hire a distant assistant, a virtual assistant, uh, if you will. And uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about how to hire a virtual assistant. My name is Jamie J. I'm the CEO and founder of Bottleneck, and this is Gordon McDougall. He's the executive vice president, uh, and I'm the founder and managing director. I founded the business in 2016, um, and Bottleneck is an outsourcing agency that helps businesses identify, hire, and cultivate their workforce through a carefully designed, systematic approach to growth. Gordon has 30 years of experience acting as a business strategist, raising capital, creating strategic mm -hmm. partnerships, and growing, and growing fast growing businesses. He was a stockbroker in the 80s, he co-founder of several businesses, and now uh, he's a strategist supporting high growth business. And uh, so I wanted to kind of kick this off, uh, Gordon, and, and maybe you could tell us a little bit why you joined Bottleneck and uh, we'll take it from there and, and kind of roll into uh, some different questions that we've outlined uh, that we'll answer today on how to hire a distant assistant. Oh, happy to jump into that. <clears throat> so over the last 30 years, I've done a significant amount of hiring, sometimes remotely, sometimes virtual assistants. And when I got introduced to Bottleneck, I thought this company seriously has the best methodology, the best tools, the best training, and is a business that is just absolutely on the brink of some significant growth. And most importantly, helping a lot of businesses that need this kind of help. Perfect. I think it's really important for people to understand kind of what it is that you do here in Bottleneck, because you've had a huge influence over the way that we've kind of put the company together so that we could um, help or assist or guide people in hiring a remote team member more effectively. I think it's really been in four areas, Jamie. One is mm, capitalizing the business so it could actually have the capital resources, the money to go and pursue its goals. <clears throat> number two is business model and strategy. And number three would be um, bringing 30 years of business experience and in a positive, constructive way, holding the company and people uh, accountable to make sure that the service that we provide is not just good, but it's amazing so that our customers and clients are just absolutely blown away by what they get. And one of the cornerstones of that, Jamie, that we, you know, the business was uh, doing this long before I came along was so that it's got systems and processes and manuals so it can create repeatable experiences, repeatable processes for its customers, which most businesses have some of, but not enough. And by using our expertise to create systems and processes and manuals, what that does is it, it helps directly with the work that we do for the company and for the founders and managers. What it does is it really helps them 
because embracing having systems and processes and manuals starts to permeate through the entire organization. So it starts with us. Next thing you know, they've got better processes and manuals for doing other processes and parts of their business. So the whole business becomes much more efficient. It becomes much more effective. When people come and go, as they inevitably do, there's a process, there's a manual in place. New people can pick up and get much more productive much faster. Yeah, I love that. Um, I believe it's Evariste uh, Evenson, I would imagine is how you pronounce that. He asked, how can people join Bottleneck? There's two ways. Uh, really quick, I want to jump into this, uh, Gordon. There's two ways to do it. If you're looking to become a distant assistant, and uh, we can explain the difference between that and a virtual assistant, uh, you can go to academy.bottleneck.online and apply there. If you're looking at becoming a client, you can go visit bottleneck.online and schedule a consultation. And uh, that's first steps. That's where we answer your questions. But we're going to be doing a lot of those questions today and answering that. So thank you for the question. Um, I hope I pronounced your name right. I'm sorry if I misspelled or mis mispronounced it. But um, we are not really a virtual assistant company. And I want, I, I, this is kind of hard uh, for people to grasp right at the onset, but I really think it's important to talk about process improvement and the differences between a distant assistant and a virtual assistant. Because I think having a nice foundational understanding of what it is that Bottleneck uh, does um, before we actually go into how to hire a virtual assistant, I think having that foundation really gives people an insight into the differences between bottleneck and other organizations that are out there. Not that anything is good or bad, but we're just different. I feel, would you agree with that Gordon? hundred percent. Okay. So what does process improvement mean to you? Are you asking me? Yeah. Or the audience. <laughs> I'm, both. I'm, well, I'm, I'm asking, I, yeah, we're both. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I'm asking you kind of what process improvement is, because we've talked a lot about this. And this is a huge differentiator, I believe. Most, most businesses, Jamie, <clears throat> operate <clears throat> based on their way they've always done things. <clears throat> one person passes on knowledge to another, one person connects with another. <clears throat> they kind of get into this rhythm of how they operate together and the flow of materials or processes or paperwork. What we do is we actually process improvement. We actually take and document all of that. We actually take and create manuals so there's written processes people can follow. It makes a world of difference. Yeah, I would agree. So documenting, I'm a big, big fan of doing something as if it's the last time you're ever going to do it. And that was a quote by the the one and only Scott Beebe. And uh, it's actually the epilogue in my book. I just absolutely love that. And what I mean by that is document, 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 document everything that you're doing. Many organizations, many business leaders, many agency owners believe they have systems and processes in place. Uh, and, and, and great if you do. The, but think of it like this. If you have someone, a key member in your organization, and that key member leaves, what do you do? How do you compensate? How do you continue working? Right? So what we've done is we've created a program where everything, every time since we're remote, every click of the mouse button is a step. And what we do is we document that step and all of our distant assistants are trained in workflow management. So it's very time consuming, not only to create the foundation, which is super important, but then as your business scales or grows or there's new team members introduced into new roles with new responsibilities, things change and you have to stay on that. And that's a really time consuming, often daunting task for many of us business leaders that are just slammed with the day to day. Right. Hey, hey Jamie. Yeah. Maybe to, so people can, can relate to this. What if we talk about this from the perspective of what, what a DA does to facilitate that when they're working with a, with a client. Like, okay. like, like when we talk about we, Bottleneck has processes, Bottleneck has manuals, Bottleneck has process improvement. It's actually much more direct than that because the, the distant assistant actually takes on the role of creating all of that. So love to give people a picture of what that actually 
feels like, looks like, and what that process is. Yeah, that's that's actually really good. It, it gets what's in here out, right? Um, two things that many people think of. I don't have time to train or uh, it's I, I can just do it faster, so I'll do it my, myself. Those are two mindsets, or I should say mindset, two things in your mindset that I would really encourage you to get rid of <laughs> and change. And the reason why is because if you continually say, I can do it faster myself, so I'm just going to do it. Well, why not document that? Do something as if it's the, la the last time you're ever going to do it. Document it one time. Or better yet, get on a video with your assistant and walk them through this process by sharing your screen or doing whatever it is that you do to document something and have them. We have we have th we have three steps that we ha teach our DAs to do. Have them do all the work for you. Number one is our distance assistants are trained to name every single task that's delegated to them. It may sound ridiculous. What is this? Email management. <laughs> what is this? calendar management, but it's really important that they name it or you name it and they understand that way, you know, you're always talking about the same thing because people, words matter. Sometimes people use different words to describe the same thing. So it's really important via communication that first and foremost, you name that particular task. The second thing that our DAs do is they listen to the instructions and confirm what they heard. This is super important because sometimes maybe they misheard or misunderstood a certain step or some of the criteria that needed to be added into a certain task. And by them confirming it, repeating it back to them, uh, it, it, it helps set expectations. And then the third part of that, and this is really important, the third part of this is setting a signal. Again, all of our DAs go through the bottleneck academy and they learn all of this and what all this means. What is the signal? The signal is the identifier that I know, my assistant knows, or that you know and your assistant knows that a task is completed. So let me give you an example. I used to have a, a creative web agency and scope creep the people kept asking for stuff as we were developing sites and it kept going on and on and on and on. And every, the longer it cost, the, the longer it uh, took us to build a website, the less profit we made. And we needed to stop that because we were really getting out of control. We were losing control. So what we did is we created what we call as a deployment kit and we send that deployment kit and it's like a uh, brand guidelines and how to log into your site and uh, you know, things like that, the logos and the colors we used and the fonts and all that kind of stuff. But we, what we said during our very first meeting with our client was, when you receive the deployment kit, this project is complete. If you want anything above that and beyond that, it, it would be a separate line item and a separate cost. Does that sound fair? And they would, I, we never experienced scope creep after that. And so what I decided to do was for every single task, have a name, confirm that task so that you understand it correctly in both parties our expectations are set. And the third thing is to set that signal, again, to help set expectations so that we both know that a task has been completed. Um, and I think this is crucial in understanding what it takes while you're working with an assistant. Now, it comes. there comes a time when you have to wonder, how do I hire a distance assistant? How do I hire a virtual assistant? And what are the differences? And it was so important for me to kind of lay out a foundation so that, that you, whoever's watching this or listening to this, whether it's live or you're watching it in evergreen mode, uh, you know, it's, it's the same thing will hold true now as it will next year. Um, so there's a couple factors, uh, Gord, that, that I want to go into about hiring. But are we ready to go into that phase yet? Or do you have something? Oh, let's, let's talk. Let's, let's talk. Because I think people have a... <clears throat> a lot of, I think there's a lot of confusion about the hiring process, whether it's for virtual, dis, virtual assistant, distance assistant, or just hiring in general. And you've got 20 years of very deep experience. I think it's really valuable. Okay, perfect. Well, you wrote down a couple questions. Um, have you ever had a challenge hiring somebody? Uh, would you like to know more about how to delegate work? Would you like to learn more about how to hire effectively? And would you like to like more time to focus on important things? And are you concerned about the economy? 
I think all of these are really relevant to our conversation today, and I'd like to address that if that's okay. Go for it. All right. So first, first foremost is uh, the question about, have you ever had a challenge hiring somebody? Um, I don't know about you, Gord, but I sure did. <laughs> oh, yes. When I first hired somebody, I didn't really have an idea of what to really ask them or what to look for. I was needing somebody to help in a very fast paced environment. So I went through four or five people before I finally found somebody that fit. And according to an article that I read, uh, it cost $4,129 to hire somebody in the United States on average. Yep. Do you know how much it costs to fire somebody and rehire? More than that. Yeah, almost nine months salary. It's it's absolutely insane. And if if you're looking to hire somebody, you have to consider this hiring as an investment, not a cost. You really have to. And so you need to take your time. Right now, we have a 0.04% turnover here in our team here at Bottleneck. That's insane. That's um, unbelievable. And if you look at the industry, the virtual assistant industry, the average turnover is 38%. It's even higher in some other high, high, you know, high end companies. The people are, you know, grass is greener. They always leave and go to another company for 50 cents more an hour. Well, we've done something special here um, in hiring over a thousand people in the last 16 years. I've learned a thing or two about this, and I think it's really important uh, for me to share some of the ideas and concepts that we've come up with. Um, do you have any questions before I go into that? Nope, just keep rolling. I think okay. Great. So some of the some of the things that I've learned um, over the past 16 years is figuring out whether someone's going to fit with my vision, with my personality, with my, our mission that we have. And uh, it's sometimes, how do I say this? I, I'm type, I don't like to hurt people's feelings. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a kind of a, a soft and maybe some people consider more of a pushover. And, and I kind of let people run over me a little bit. And I had to kind of get a little bit firm and and really try my best at um, sharing what it is that I'm looking for. Because if someone comes to work, I don't care if they have different opinions. I want them to challenge me. I love that stuff. But I also want them to have uh, similar core values. And uh, they have to believe in the vision. They have to believe in the mission. And I've said this many times, if it's just me running up a mountain, <laughs> attacking, the, trying to take this mountain, and I have 10 people next to me going all different directions and not, not really believing in we want to go to the top of this mountain, well, it's going to be really tough. And, it, and it's not going to be very rewarding when I get to that top of the mountain. I'm going to be all alone. Whereas if you have 10 other people that have the same vision, the same mission, and they're all fighting for that same thing. When you get there, you get there as a team. You may not get there the same way. Some people may go around different ways and over the rocks and you know swim through the creeks and do whatever, but they're going to get there because they're motivated and they share a very similar core belief. Um, and, and I think that's really important. That's why you need to take your time when you're hiring. If you say, I just need to get somebody on yesterday, just find me a rock star, um, that's bad thinking. That's bad hiring, in my opinion. Most likely, the chances or the likelihood of that actually working out long term for you is not going to be good. Now, if you're looking for a project, sure, you know, you can you can do that all day long, just get the project done. And but if you're actually looking for somebody to support your cause, uh, that you want to be on board for a long time, uh, you take your time during the hiring process. That's the number one thing. Um, I've found that it's pretty challenging right? Uh, in my personal assistant, when I hired her, uh, she was not my first choice. I chose somebody else. And I found out within two weeks that I made the wrong decision. And I went crawling back and I said, would you please consider coming to work here? And uh, now she's our director of operations. A lot of people that know me know Raina, and she's just absolutely fantastic. Now, it took a while for me to really get to know her and her to know me about 90 days before we were really, really rocking, but we spent a lot of time together, maybe an hour a day 
training, going over what it was that I was doing. And I learned so much from her because I was able to focus on, uh, you know, higher, higher level, like 30,000 feet views, started strategizing and things like that. She was able to get down to the details and remind me of following up on certain things. And she did a lot of research and came up with some fantastic ideas. And that's the relationship that you, if you if you massage those relationships the right way, they really, really blossom into something amazing. And you get to grow together. And it's it's uh, to see where she's come in just over three years is absolutely amazing. So that's that's probably my number one uh, number one uh, point that I'll make is take your time in hiring, um, hire slow and and, you know, give them a couple interviews introduce them to other people on your team make sure that they you know are vibing with other people on the team because if there's going to be any headbutting or anything like that you'll find out right away your teammates will tell you uh oh, hey you know this is probably i don't really care for this person or you know we have different beliefs or something and uh yeah you don't want to rock the apple cart there any insight into that gordon <clears throat> jamie you said you've hired a thousand people over the last 16 years. Maybe if we make this more uh, relatable, you taught, you taught, shared the story about you hiring Rena. What about another story about another hiring success? Another hiring success. Um, Not necessarily yours, but a, a client working with, with it, with an assistant. So, what we do here is we have a consultation and we will talk with a what we call as a prospect. Um, that prospect will meet with us during this consultation and they kind of give us an idea of what it is that they're looking for. And we ask them, what are your biggest pain points? What would you like to get off of your plate? And what we find is they're just putting these big lists together, which is great. Brain dumps are really important. Um, but we had uh, a client of ours that really didn't know what she didn't know. She didn't really have an idea of what she could delegate because she was one of those people that just did a lot of stuff herself. The challenge was she never wrote anything down. She didn't document any of that process. And so um, she, had, she had 10 employees, no processes were in place, and she was running around like a chicken with her head cut off, uh, so to speak. And she was going to a, she was an agency owner and she was going to this big uh, event and she loved going to this event. She was, you know, that's where, that's what she thrives on. She loves speaking. She loves doing that kind of stuff. And so she was going to this event, but she was so scared about this event because when she got back, she knew she would take her a week or two or three weeks. I forget what she said to catch back up. And to me that so many people share a very similar feeling um, they can't be away from work for a month because uh, either it'll go under, they'll have too much to do. They'll say, hey, I'm going to go on a trip, but they're taking business calls. Um, and, and this is 100% due to a lack of proper systems and processes. And so when you're hiring somebody, it's really hard to turn the throttle down. Um, you're, you're so used to doing the same thing and going after – this a hundred miles an hour and doing all your stuff, calling and, and trying to sell and, you know, writing emails and you're doing all of it yourself and just going a hundred miles an hour. It's really difficult to take your foot off the gas, but you have to do that. And, and Jamie, <clears throat> I think it might be a good time for what I call a shameless plug for bottleneck. <clears throat> so there's no shame in this. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, we're, having a conversation about the hiring process and how to hire one of the reasons for working with bottleneck or another virtual assistant company is a lot of the hiring process is done for you yep. significant part of it let's talk about that for a minute really good point um so take your foot off the gas pedal and 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 Take some time training this really invest in this person so that you can really really build that relationship but if if you go back a little bit differently um right now if you go out and try to hire somebody it is extremely time consuming you're posting on indeed or monster whatever you are or talking to friends and doing all these interviews and uh it 
writing job descriptions and doing all of this stuff. It's, it's very time consuming. By the way, you're also running your business, right? Maybe you have the luxury of getting somebody else to do that for you, but still it's taking up space in your head. So what we've done here is we've designed a hiring process and an onboarding process. And what we do is we do all the heavy lifting. Basically, what you'll do is during that consultation, you give us an idea of some of the things that your biggest pain point. What is just what are things that just drain you of energy? But they're really important. You got to do them. But you really wish you could get those off your desk. Well, we take that entire list and we break down priorities and then we will go out to our uh, network and we'll identify three candidates we believe are going to be great fits. We wouldn't present them to you if we wouldn't hire them ourselves. And then you, all you have to do is show up. You show up. We have people on the call that are going to guide you through the interview process. We'll even help you with questions. Um, but we'll do the three interviews. And then it's super simple. You choose which person that you want to start working with. And then that person starts whenever you want them to start on day one. And they actually start leading the conversation for you. They ask you all the questions on all the tasks that you need to get done. So basically, you're just answering questions. You're not having to take up a lot of space in your brain creating what it is you think to create because that's what we do. Think of it like this. Have you ever wanted to do something, but you didn't do it because life got in the way? Has that ever happened? Oh, yeah. Right? Well, the problem that a lot of people, and I hate saying the word problem, the challenge that a lot of people have is getting stuff done. Just getting stuff done. And that causes stress because you don't know. You need to get stuff done, but you're not getting it done. And you just don't know what you don't know. That leads to stress. And nobody likes stress. <laughs> so what we've done is designed the program to where we go in and we kind of show you how to get stuff done. You create delegate, and we execute. So think of us as the arm of, we execute everything that you think of that you would really like to get done, but just don't have the time. Imagine what you could accomplish if you could just think things and have it done. Imagine. Well, that's what we do. That's the magic of bottleneck. And then let's talk about the, oh my goodness. <clears throat> if you're hiring yourself and if you make a Miss, have a misfire that can cost you thousands of dollars to terminate that person. Yep. When you hire a distant assistant, that cost doesn't exist. Yeah, there's still a, there's still a cost there, right? Uh, uh, however, if you take the time to train and you think of this as an investment as opposed to a cost, um, you'll develop more of an intimate based relationship with this person as opposed to a transactional based relationship. And there's a huge difference there. Transactional people are working for money, intimate based people are working for a vision together, huge difference. And so what we do is a 60 day onboarding process. It's two phases. First 30 days, that is training. So a half hour, an hour a day, you spend your time or whoever the point of contact is spends their time with the distant assistant and they teach them the ropes. That's basically what they do. And then after the training, they actually work throughout the day and they do tasks and things like that. So they're practicing on the job, getting it going. And then the second phase, the sex, next 30 days, that's the documentation period. They take that same allotment of time that they used for training in the first phase and they start documenting all of the processes that they've learned or all the tasks that have been delegated to them. Then they send it off to our internal design team and we build a workflow manual. This is actually an asset for you, the agency owner, the business leader, and you get to keep this. It's all branded and your colors and your logos and table of contents and all that's really, really fantastic. It's sharp. You get that on day 61. Once that occurs, we have another meeting with our internal success manager team to meet with you and make sure everything is going well. They do this every two weeks, by the way, for 10 or 15 minutes, just to kind of make sure everything's going uh, on, on pace. And then on day 61, you turn in to a full-fledged, uh, you, you get, get to gain the confi confidence now to delegate even more responsibility at that point. 
but you have your workflow menu. Now, if you didn't have any systems and processes in place, or if you did, you may be interested to see kind of how we did this, because what I found is once this document is created, it needs to be updated all the time, right? Whenever changes happen. But once that document, the format is created, you can start adopting that in different roles and res with their responsibilities within your organization. So Jamie, I know you try and keep these live streams to a, approximately 30 minutes. <clears throat> What's really obvious to me is that there is so much more here to unpack, so much more to share. Uh, it's hard to compress 20 years of, of running, in, running a virtual assistant, distant assistant agency, hiring a thousand people. It's hard to unpack. It's impossible to unpack that in 30 minutes. And so I, I, what I'm wondering is I know some people are watching this show live. Some people will watch this <clears throat> later on because it's, it's posted. What if we ask the folks that are watching this and other people to post their requests for what else they'd like to learn about in terms of hiring? Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah. If you have a question, please post it here. And what Gordon and I are going to be doing this over the course of the next couple of months, we're going to do it once or twice a week, and we're just going to be answering questions. So if you have questions, I, if you have a question, ask it, please, because other people probably have that question, or maybe they didn't think to ask that question, but it would be relevant to their decision-making process. So if you have any questions, by all means, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, doesn't matter, let me know, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. I did want to talk one more thing, Gordon. You asked a really good question. I think this is on the top of everybody's mind. Are you concerned about the economy, the outlook, mm. the economical outlook of, of the business? There, there is so much There's so much news and noise right now about re possible recession. We're in a recession. We might be in a recession. <clears throat> Companies have cut back hiring. I think it's a great time to be talking about that topic. Yeah, and I won't really go into this. Maybe we can have another conversation more along the lines, but here's what's happening right now. Okay. And this is according to an article written, uh, I believe, oh man, it was in business.org by Trevor Wheelwright, I think it is. And he wrote a really interesting article. He just wrote it in, uh, last month. Um, but they, um, they surveyed, um, and I'm not sure hundreds, I think it was hundreds of them. So take that for what you will, but hundreds of bit small businesses, and they found that 89% of small business owners have increased their prices and nearly half of all small businesses are reducing inventory. What does that mean? 40, 46% are reducing the size of their inventory. 44% are purchasing software to help track their business expenses. 24% have hired an accountant to find solutions to save money. 40% have reduced marketing costs. 29% have moved to a cheaper workspace. And only 17% of small business owners report not changing anything to reduce costs. And according to this survey, as many as 42% of small business owners have reduced the number of employees on their team. I'll say that again. Wow. As many as 42% of small business owners have reduced the number of employees on their team. However, 45% of small business owners report struggling to find employees. Now, these stats are huge, and, and I'm happy to share this source with you if you'd like to review it yourself, because go read and research all you can yourself. Don't take my word for it. But when I was researching this topic, it hit me. There's organizations out there right now that are getting ready to lay off because of our inflation that is highest in four decades here in the U.S., just, just reached 91 it has never jumped this fast. Even with the Fed uh, raising their rates, it's never jumped this fast before. So what's going? What does that mean? What a hundred dollars was worth uh, in twenty twenty now is worth about hundred and twenty dollars to buy that same thing, right? So <laughs> you can see what's happening there, and and is everybody getting a raise? The 9.1% raise? No, they aren't. So what are companies doing? Companies right now are laying people off. They're reducing their overhead. They still have the same workload. They may be even increasing their prices, but they're trying to find ways to stay afloat. So my offer to everybody that is considering doing something like this, you, 
why not explore what I like to call the 10% rule? 10% rule was, was I created that through a conversation that I had with a fellow by the name of Dan Goldstern. Uh, of, he was co-founder of Dojo.co. And what he's, he, they did a study um, right after the pandemic when everybody got sent home. This company, a software company, had about 200 employees. But they did this study. And what they found was that the, the programmers or the, the coders, when they went home, their productivity increased by 70%. That's insane. Pretty amazing. But now they couldn't figure out if your productivity is so high, why in the heck are we stalling getting these new versions and updates and new software out? What, what's, what's the deal? Why are we not hitting these deadlines? Why are we going way past them? Well, they found out because <clears throat> two different people were coding. When they tried to put that together, there's all kinds of bugs. They lost that collaborative element, right? In person, you could sit there right next to somebody and collaborate and make things work. Now, there's a lot of interruptions and things like that, but here's the key. What they found was about 10% of their company could remain remote. They were highly productive and they thrived in that environment. So what they were able to do is reduce the footprint of their office space. Those people got to stay home. They saved on fuel. They saved on drive time. They didn't have to come into an office. Overhead was drastically reduced. And had they never done that test, they would have never found that out. So the silver linings and the blessings <clears throat> of COVID is the 10% rule, in my opinion. Look at your organization. If you don't have 10% of your organization working remotely, I would encourage you a minimum of 10%. We're 100% remote, but I would encourage you to explore that and see what you can do about tweaking this to where you can make this remote work work better for you. I really, really believe that in my heart of hearts that that will work. It, it'll also uh, motivate you to get your systems and processes in place because systems and processes become even more evident and more popular and more ne necessary when you don't have that in-person uh, relationship going. What if we do a quick poll here, Jimmy? Of all the people in the audience, what are pe how, many, how many businesses have a workflow manual? Oh, yeah. Love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you business owners have a workflow manual? Let's see if we can post that on there. That's that should go on Facebook, I believe. It uh, it might go on uh, YouTube as well. <clears throat> so, uh, love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, workflow manuals are. A necessary evil, I'd say, because it could be frustrating. It's very time um, painstakingly uh, something that needs to be updated every single time uh, something occurs that you find, uh, and we call them friction points. Uh, so every time you identify a new friction point, you have to tweak the process. And it seems like, you know, as soon as you finish this, hey, we finally got our workflow done. <clears throat> Oh, we need to add one more thing on there. So it is a constant thing, but I will help you with two things. It'll help you scale your business more effectively because people are replaceable. As someone gets promoted, someone else can step into that role really quickly. By the way, it took me about 90 days to train Raina. My new assistant, it took Raina two weeks because all the systems and processes were in place. And, and do you like what I said? Raina trained her, not me. Uh, so there's definitely, that's one reason why uh, those are good. The second reason is if you plan on exiting your business, your valuation will go through the roof if you have every single task documented because you won't need to be there. They don't need to get inside your head. It's all right there. Uh, so yeah, food for thought. <laughs> Anything else, Gordon? I think it's, <clears throat> Jamie, this is a topic that is, so timely, so much going on in the world right now. The great resignation. Now we got recession fears. I think we could spend the next 20 hours on this and still not do justice. And I think more importantly, Jamie, I think there's a there's a, a thirst and a hunger for this type of, I don't know whether to call it information or education. Maybe it's a bit of both. So I think for now, 
not a bad place. We got a, a good start on it. We plan on doing this uh, continuously for the next two months or longer. So I don't know about you. What if we wrap up here and we leave people with a, we'll be back. Or as Steve Jobs would say, one more thing, but it's next time. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. I am just going to post the um, article. It's called the, <clears throat> the Effects of Inflation on U.S. Small Businesses. And I'll put the link in there. Uh, so if you're on YouTube or Facebook, you should, you should be able to get that. You should be able to see it there. Uh, if you're on LinkedIn, I'll share it uh, separately. But uh, yeah, that, uh, let me see, right there. It's called The Effects yep, on um, U.S. Small Businesses. Uh, so I'll go ahead and be posting this um, on the different platforms as well. So I guess I guess that's pretty much a wrap, huh? Well, folks, send us, <coughs> send us any suggestions, comments, inquiries, things you want to learn about, and we'll address them. Perfect. Let me just wrap up really quick. Uh, if you want to learn how you can break through the bottleneck in your business today, go to bottleneck.online slash BTV. You can see me and Gordon talking there. We have a couple different. We're going to have a whole series on this. Uh, but you also get to see some other conversations that I have with some really amazing, talented, smart, smart people. Um, I am an author. Uh, you can go uh, learn more about my book, uh, Quit Repeating Yourself. And it talks about how today's leaders are using systems and processes to grow their business the right way. <laughs> kind of ironic. Today, uh, Gordon and I talked about how to hire a virtual assistant. We went into some different areas. Uh, we'd love to hear more questions from you. Um, and if you missed my conversation with Ron LaPointe, uh, we, we just j just uh, had a great conversation uh, this past week. And <clears throat> Ron talked about leadership consulting and your bottom line. He made some really good points there. I'm excited to talk with Shiv Gupta on how to plan a rebuild for the brand post COVID. That's coming up Wednesday, August 10th. So make sure to check that out and come back around. And, and uh, so, Gordon, anything else before we wrap? I think that's it. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, have a great one.